What's up, everybody? Welcome back inside the Letterman Lounge for another edition of the Letterman Lounge. That's Matt Parker, Ohio State recruiting expert for Letterman Row and On3. Uh, Matt, we're going to hop right in. we got a lot to talk about. I'm Spencer Holbrook. Didn't even think to introduce myself because it's such a busy show. Uh, Ohio State has another quarterback committed, another offensive weapon, 2025 this time. Not 24. We're skipping right into 2025. Of course, Aaron Nolan's already in the class for 24. 2025 quarterback Tavian St. Clair, four-star from Bell Fountain, Ohio. Uh, Chieftains, now going to be a Buckeye. So, Tavian St. Clair, after watching him throw the last two days, getting to know Tavian a little bit, uh, what is your impression, Matt? Again, not wasting any time here. What is your impression of Tavian St. Clair committing to Ohio State? I think he's a guy that looks like a guy. He, I mean, he absolutely fits the part physically for what Ohio State is looking for, especially in that 2025 cycle. Uh, he's 6'4", about 213, 215, which that's a lot bigger than he was at this time a year ago. Um, you know, I, I was not yet with the establishment, Letterman Row, when uh, Tavian St. Clair really entered the fold for Ohio State. But just talking with you, a couple of other guys on the beat and stuff like that, really just kind of piecing together this last year that has been for Tavian St. Clair, the growth that he has had physically, um, you know, just by his body changing and things like that. And then what he's done on the football field uh, very quickly emerged as someone that Ohio state was keeping their thumb on, keeping the tabs on. Uh, I believe he visited Columbus in January uh, at some point. Uh, and then he was at a spring practice, a couple of spring practices for Ohio state this, this past year, uh, and then he camped at Ohio State last week, and that was an announced trip. Like that, uh, that was pretty well known. And then Tuesday, uh, you you had sent me a text, but we're at different fields at the Woody, saying uh, Tavian St. Clair just walked on by. Um, and a little bit of an unannounced thing. Got a throwing session in Tuesday, and then Wednesday he competes in the seven on seven tournament at Ohio State. And I look at him, and I just see the growth that he has made already as a 2025 prospect and now commit he has one of the best deep balls uh i think we have seen especially i mean certainly on on the camp circuit at ohio state from from this past summer um which camp season has officially ended that was that was a fun time just a quick note there but I think the thing that impresses me so much about tavian st Clair is that he got his offer not even a month ago from Ohio State. I think it was May 24th is when he announced his offer from Ohio State after Corey Dennis visited Bell Fountain before the uh, the visitation period ended. Um, and then he commits June 21st. And to be so, and that, that comes after he got offers from Michigan, Alabama, LSU. I mean, all the big dogs jumped in after Ohio State offered. Um, and I mean, Tavian knew. He's a kid that's grown up 50 minutes away from Ohio State. He's been to campus already double-digit times, I'm pretty sure. Um, loves the program. He's able to remove the fan in him and really looked at Ohio State as, as a recruit, as a prospect, and just, just fell in love with, with Ohio State, Ryan Day, Corey Dennis, Brian Hartline, you know, the whole entire brain trust at Ohio State. Um, and I like that Ohio State took the commitment as early as they did. I think that's a good a good move for them to get the ball rolling in their 2025 cycle because I think what we are going to see is two things with their recruiting approach is one, they're going to build up that offensive class first because they know those spots are going to be filled as soon as possible with the juggernaut that is that offense. But then additionally, you see this inward out approach that Ohio State is now really implementing on on the recruiting trail by really locking down Ohio because allegedly other programs are coming into the state and doing what they want. Um, Ohio Ohio State has offered counting Tavian St. Clair, I believe, 10 Ohio prospects in the 2025 cycle. Um, One of those 10 being Ryan Montgomery, quarterback from Finley. That's now a little bit of a different situation uh, for now. But then you have eight other guys, seven, eight other guys that now become very, very, very realistic targets for Ohio State because they already have an in-state guy in the class and it's a quarterback. So like that's that's two pressures 
taken away from every single other 2025 kid that has an Ohio State offer. You don't have to be the first in-state guy. And, I mean, none of them, none else were quarterbacks except uh, Montgomery. But just that pressure of being the first in-state guy is already removed. And the natural leader in the class is already there. So I, I love everything about this commitment for Ohio State. Um, the next thing is is for Tavian St. Clair to just continue building those relationships with Ohio State and then stay on that trajectory that he is on uh, with his development. Yeah, I don't think Tavian did anything wrong last year at camp. I thought he was really, really, really raw. Uh, saw him throw two different times last year at camp and then also – uh, at the seven on seven tournament and to go f- the thing that Tavian St. Clair did the best this year that he didn't do last year was that he was three inches taller and 30 pounds heavier. And when you go from six, one, one eighty to six, four, six, three, six, four, depending on what kind of shoes he's wearing uh, and 215 pounds, that is not normal for a kid. And when you go from having that really, really early, interest from I think Tennessee last year was was really high on him and then Ohio State sees the the junior tape and then Ohio State sees or the sophomore tape apologies and then you know goes to to Bell Fountain and sees how big he's gotten and how much better he's gotten uh just from a stature standpoint it's hard not to fall in love there and you know this is one of those things where it's rare that Ohio State has two in-state quarterbacks that you could Fall, not fall back on, but really start to recruit highly after a sophomore year. I don't think Ryan Montgomery did anything wrong here. I think this is just Tavian St. Clair showing like, hey, I'm the guy. And then also jumping in the class. We heard rumors that Tavian St. Clair was high on Alabama as as early as or as late as last week. But guess what? Ohio State wins the day here because like you said, 50 miles from home, the chance to play for Ryan Day and Corey Dennis. I, like seeing last year in June, seeing Tavian St. Clair throw and seeing the raw uh, you know, way that he moved, the way that he was throwing, the, the deep ball needed some polish. To now seeing him this year, it, back-to-back days in June, it, it's it's actually kind of a delight to watch because you just see this kid progress from, hey, this guy might, you know, Toledo's offered, Tennessee's interested, but is he a Tennessee caliber player? You know, uh, you got some max schools in on him. Could he be Ohio State maybe as a second quarterback for now to now being 6'4 and 215 pounds and being the guy in the class? I think the the trajectory has already started, but also there's two paths here that I, more I think about Tavian St. Clair. There's two paths for him. He can stay as a four star player, a top four hundred or five hundred player, and be a really solid option at quarterback for Ohio State, or he can take another step forward and become a five star prospect. I think the latter is more likely. I, after watching him throw, I know that he's going to get docked a little bit because of the competition. You know, I'm from uh, the Hardin County, Logan County area, like. He doesn't play great competition, but he doesn't play bad competition. And so he might get docked a little bit for that. But when he gets into these camp settings, that deep ball is going to show. And that 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 polish is going to start to show. And I think he's got five-star potential. I think the ceiling is five-star. The floor is probably already where he's at. He's already at the floor. He can only go better from here. I mean, I think it does help that uh, he's an Ohio State commit. Because the yes. ranking okay. – ranking- Rankings are subjective. They just are. There is no unbiased evaluator, no matter who does it, where you're at. Um, And if Ryan Day, Corey Dennis, and Brian Hartline like a quarterback, that prospect is going to just naturally get a bump. It's going to happen. Um, You mentioned the the five-star potential in him. And the thing that gives him that potential is his size. I mean, I look at that size at 6'4", 6'3", like you mentioned, 215. And that's that like that is a Division I FBS Ohio State quarterback right there. And then if he can do the things that an Ohio State quarterback commit does, given the competition level that he plays against, he's it should look like he's putting up video game numbers. I'll be quite frank with you. Now, granted, that is an expectation, maybe a bit of an unfair one, but that's what comes with being a, a quarterback commit to Ohio State. Like that is now the world that he is going to be living in and, and dealing with and those expectations. And just based on watching him uh, perform the last two days, I mean – Man, he's just oozing with confidence. And it's not like an arrogant confidence. It's just a, I belong here, and I know I belong here, but I'm going to 
I'm going to act like I still got to do it. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's the it's the arm talent mixed with right when he stops throwing the ball, he puts on the aviators and walks <laughs> around and kind of has a little bit of strut about him. And, you know, you can see that the teammates gravitate toward him. They listen to him in the huddle. They talk to him off the field. You see, you know, the way he interacts with Ohio State players and Ohio State coaches. Like, I agree, you know, it's, it's a two-day sample size, but you get a good feel for, like, how a guy operates when you watch him for multiple hours there. And, you know, I'm not sitting there with binoculars stalking this guy, but you can see when he talks to people, when he interacts with people, the way that he carries himself. And, again, like, I I said it to one of the Ohio State players who was wearing similar glasses yesterday. It takes a lot of confidence to rock those things. And uh, <laughs> Damien St. Clair does it, man. Like, I don't know. You, you got to have just, a bit of that. There, there's just a coolness about him, you yeah, know? Yeah, that's say it. It's like there's just a coolness about him that – Kind of reminds me of the entirety of the Ohio State quarterback room. You know, we've had conversations with Kyle McCord and Devin Brown and Lincoln Keenholes, and even Tristan Jibia has a little bit of that coolness now that he's been in Columbus for, you know, a few months. But one thing that was asked on uh, that I've seen on our message board and a couple of other places on, on the, the depth of the interwebs was the comparison of taking an early commitment at quarterback, given what happened in the 2024 cycle. Um, there's a major difference here that I, I want to get out there that is important before we go to our next topic. I do not see in any world, and I'm putting this out there now as we record this on June 22nd, I do not see any world in which that relationship sours to the point where Tavian St. Clair, an in-state prospect, decommits from Ohio State. There is so much comfortability between Ohio State and Tavian St. Clair and Tavian St. Clair's family and the Bell Fountain coaching staff that has really been built up. There's been a lot of behind the scenes work that has been done in this recruitment. Um, there's a really, really solid foundation. And you just don't see in-state kids decommit from Ohio State. Very, very, very rarely does that happen. Um especially at quarterback, nonetheless, when the last in-state quarterback they took was Joe Burrow. So I just don't see a world where that exists, um, especially where it was someone who grew up as a fan, then removed the fan from his recruitment, and now he's committed. So he kind of can be a fan again, you know, but like also still be that. Like this is a recruitment that ended before it started truthfully and, and from my viewpoint once he got that ohio state offer i think it took me just gathering some intel it, it probably took me a week before i put in that prediction into the uh, on three recruiting prediction machine i didn't want to do it right away i needed to learn some things but after learning some things uh that's locked in and now he can start building the class he can start talking to guys like uh toledo whitmer offensive tackle carter low uh dorian brew Trey McNutt, um, Bo Jackson, Marquise Davis, Justin Hill out of Winton Woods. I mean, those are guys that probably got text messages, phone calls last night, if not today, from their potential future quarterback. Matt, before we wrap up this David St. Clair conversation, um, 2018 Ohio State starting quarterback Dwayne Haskins, six foot three, 220 pounds. 2019, 2020, Justin Fields, Ohio State starting quarterback, a little thicker. To six foot three, 220 pounds when he got the starting job. You know where I'm going with this, Matt. CJ Stroud last year, starting weight, six foot three, 217 pounds. Kyle McCord this year, projected starter, six foot three, 215 pounds. Devin Brown hasn't had the time to develop uh, as much in the system with Mickey, Mar Mickey Marotti in the weight room. He will probably play around 205 to 215. Damian St. Clair, six foot three, 215. Ohio State has a type is what I'm saying. Uh, the best yeah. uh, version of that, the best uh, type right now for them is six foot three, 215 to 220. Tavian St. Clair is that. And I think that also helps win the day when you talk about, we're, and we're not going to get into Ryan Montgomery versus Bryce Underwood versus Tavian St. Clair and who's the top of the board. You know, I posted something on the Letterman Lounge message board about that. Go check it out there. I think there's even a deal going on to go see it for, for a little bit of coin. But I just think that like Tavian is what Ohio State wants. Like he's what they're looking for. And do things change? Possibly. He doesn't sign on a dotted line for a long time. But yeah. right now, when you have a kid like that 45 minutes from home and you've got 
a program like Alabama breathing down your neck, trying to trying to get him to come for visits and come for camps and game days and things like that. You take that commitment, and and I think that Ohio State's going to be really happy with the with the end result of taking a commitment from Tavian St. Clair. My last thing about this, and then I want to go on to the official visitors. And I brought this up when we had first started this conversation, is that Ohio State taking the commitment of Tavian St. Clair as early as it did really shows that they are putting their, you know, they're putting they're backing their words with their actions by saying that they are going to recruit Ohio as aggressively as they as they want, which I mean, programs were jumping in on Tavian St. Clair, the moment Ohio State offered. I mean, you saw it. He announced that offer from Ohio State, and then you see every single other program. He Even St. Clair went down to SEC country and, and visited some programs and stuff like that. And so the fact that Ohio State is, is, is talking the talk and walking the walk, I think that's big, and that's going to pay dividends uh, on the recruiting trail moving forward under the Ryan Day regime, if you will. Yeah, Matt, so far, um, and this is going to be a great transition, thank you. So far, the guys Ohio State truly wants, aside from one player uh, in Ohio the last couple cycles, they've got. And, you know, the one is Jordan Marshall. They follow it up like a week later and get James Peoples out of Texas. So, you know, you call it a one-for-one. One. You don't want to lose an in-state guy, especially when you're going to see him at the end of November every year. But the other guys that Ohio State's truly wanted, they've got. Now, to that change, I, I think it, it could they and can. that leads me to official visits, the last official visit weekend of June. What last year was the biggest official visit weekend at Ohio State, they just loaded it with five-star guys. Um, from what I've understood this year, talking to a couple people in the building the last few days, they really took a different approach in spreading out their visitors. I think they did a great job spreading it out because last year the vibe seemed off after that last visit weekend of June because there were so many guys on campus and there was just you know too, too little time to talk to each of them and so I think you tried to spread yourself too thin that 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 bread wasn't was too big for the peanut butter you put on there and then all of a sudden you're you're playing catch up because the official visit didn't go great you don't land any of those guys this year they spread it all out this official visit weekend is a really nice one but it's not going to be the headliner around the country but you're going to know a lot about this program when the official visit weekend's over. And it starts and ends with Aaron Scott Jr. and Bryce West. There is, I, there's some really talented players on campus. Justin Scott's going to be here. Miles Lockhart's going to be here. Uh, expect that visit to go well. Kingston Villama Asa, I think I got that correct. Uh, that's that's a big visit. Damarian Witten's a big visit. Try to get another in-state guy. Peyton Pierce, a commit. I don't care. It starts and ends with Aaron Scott and Bryce West. I'm getting a little animated here because Aaron Scott Jr. has some real Michigan steam right now. And Bryce West, uh, you know, you've got to get him. Like that, that non-negotiable. So starts ends with the two cornerbacks. You lock those two guys in, and you're gonna have a pretty good defensive class to start with here. Yeah, and I'll start with I'll start with Aaron Scott Jr. here. Um, his recruitment has been so much fun to follow, right? Because at at, at one point, you know. Probably a couple months ago, it was, oh, man, no one has a chance. It's Ohio State. And in and, and the back of my mind when that's happening, I'm like, all right, let's see these official visits. Let's see what happens. He goes to Oregon. Uh, and Oregon, to me, truthfully, was always a long shot, even though, you know, that's that was his, quote, dream school. Uh, that's a thousand miles away from home. And that's the just the development, even though they just had Christian Gonzalez go 17 overall. Uh, to my New England Patriots, um, just a great pick there. Uh, it just, it just, it, it didn't make sense. It didn't make sense. I didn't see it ever happening. Um, he he enjoyed his trip to Eugene though. Got to rep Uncle Phil for a little bit, you know. Anyway, uh, or it gets interesting though is with Ohio State and Michigan. Those are the two schools that are one A one B, and it goes back and forth just about every single day. Probably every single hour it flips in that in Aaron's head. Uh, Michigan, by all accounts, last week made a really, really big push uh, for him to make his commitment to Michigan and to Jim Harbaugh. Um, last weekend was, I think, I, I, there's they have a nickname for when all of their commits come. It's escaping me off the top of my head right now. But uh, a big portion of Michigan's recruiting class um 
was in Ann Arbor last weekend, and it was a full court press, as it was described by Aaron Scott, um, by the Michigan commits. Uh, I, I read something interesting, though, from, from the Wolverine, though, in that um, there was the, the commits. And I'm, I'm kind of ad-libbing this here. I'm going to have to run this back and check and verify, and I'll verify this in the comments later. But there was a, a point made in, in the official visit recap that Michigan's commits didn't feel the need to remind Aaron of how important he was, which that was interesting to me because he's there visiting for that specific reason. Um, he is there for all at the time, I think it was like 19 commits because now Michigan's at 21 or 22 and they've picked up a few commitments since that. Uh, so yeah, that's what, yeah, 19, I think, uh, either way, uh, Aaron was there for that reason for those 19 kids at the time to say, Hey, we want you, you're important. We need you to be here. You're talented, all of that stuff. Uh, and from my understanding, that didn't really seem to happen, which is interesting. That's interesting to me. And then he goes to Ohio State this weekend where he will visit Columbus with Bryce West the second time that that has happened. Um, again, as far as I know, they have not visited any programs together at the same time, um, except Ohio State when they did so at the beginning of April. <clears throat> and uh, Peyton Pierce, Ohio State commit, will be there. Uh, I have heard from multiple sources that Garrett Stover is going to make his 1,000th unofficial visit to Ohio State this weekend. Uh, and then I've heard from a couple of sources inside the Woody Hayes Athletic Center that uh, all of Ohio State's in-state commits um, are going to be at Ohio State this weekend. And that's where that push of the best in Ohio State in Ohio is going to happen. Uh, additionally, the other three in-state or four in-state commits, sorry, uh, Deontay and Devontae Armstrong, Mark Nave, and then Sam Williams Dixon are all offensive players. And it's all going to be the push of, Hey, we want you to come here so you can make us better. So you can make the guys in our wide receiver room better. And they're going to make you better. Uh, think about it. There's two five-star wide receivers committed to Ohio state. Um, so I, I, I told you yesterday, I told you Tuesday when we were at the seven on seven that I felt it was 51 49 in favor of Michigan, just from what I had been hearing. Uh, and I still feel that way. I still feel that way going into this visit, but the fact that Ohio state has the last visit, um, that's a, this is the smallest official visit weekend that they've had. Now that Elias Rudolph canceled his visit, there's only seven seven official visitors this weekend uh and it's potentially the ohio state cornerback class with aaron scott bryce west and miles lockhart like those are the three guys that tim walton has circled on and that that is potentially the class uh so they can get a feel and, and just go from there um did you have a comment or do you want me to go right into bryce west because i feel uh, like i'm talking i do have a comment um Good friend of the show, Jeremy Birmingham, used to have a saying where if you have official visits, right, and like Ohio State's up here and Michigan's here, and the official visit to Michigan goes to here, well, Ohio State still has a chance to take that official visit and go to here. And so, mm -hmm. you know, the, the, old, the old saying, there are layers to this, you know, like if, if they're not even when the officials start, then the, the school that has the that has the lead to begin is probably going to have the lead at the end of official visits. If Ohio State's here and Michigan's here and Michigan does a really good job to even come here, Ohio State still has a chance to, to raise itself. And so that's where I think this all gets misconstrued is like, does Michigan have a lot of momentum? Yes. Is it post glow visit? Is it post visit glow or is it real momentum? And there's some truth in both that post-visit momentum can lead to real momentum. But when you talk about, you know, stemming the tide here, if you're Ohio State, you have five days of hearing nothing but, wow, Michigan did a great job. What do you got, Tim? What do you got, Perry, Perry Eliano? What do you got, Ryan Day? That's all it is. Like, he's an in-state guy, very, very, very talented quarterback. What do you got? 
you going to be able to do it? Because Michigan, Michigan thinks they can do it. So, you know, at this point, it's, it's go in there, handle your business. You've executed very well on every official visit weekend so far. I've heard the term home run used more than watching Barry Bonds highlights. And, and you got to do it for one more weekend. I know you're tired. I, I know that, that those, uh, those July vacations are going to be nice, but it would be even nicer if you can go knowing you're going to get Aaron Scott. Go on to Bryce West. Yeah. Uh, one thing I want to note about the Aaron Scott recruitment, by the way, that started with Perry Eliano. Um, Cincinnati, when Perry was at Cincinnati as their cornerbacks coach, uh, Cincinnati was on Aaron pretty early. And that relationship carried over to Ohio State. So I wrote about this for LettermanRoad.com, and it's going to be out uh, by the time that this video goes up, whenever this is going up. Um that that relationship, uh, this recruitment is so layered for Ohio State because it didn't originate at Ohio State. This originated when uh, Perry was at Cincinnati. He carried that relationship over Aaron Camps at Ohio State and then bang. So actually, I think he got his offer before he camped. Um, I can't remember off the top of my head. But regardless, this has been in Ohio State's favor, not favor, but it's layered. Going on to Bryce West, however. That is something that is in Ohio State's favor. Uh, there has been a, a recent smokes, a Michigan smoke screen here. Uh, and, and just talking to a lot of people, I just I just don't buy it. I mean, when when Ryan Day drives up to Cleveland Glenville to offer Bryce West as a freshman in high school, that's a battle that they are just not going to lose. No matter how many times Michigan has beaten Ohio State. Um, no matter how many defensive coordinators and cornerbacks coaches that Ohio State has gone through, that relationship with Ohio State and Glenville and Ted Ginn, um, it, it is it has resurged. I mean, there is a resurgence in that program. There is no love lost between Ohio State and Glenville. And you just talking with Bryce, you can just hear how he talks about Ohio State and the change in tone and his voice and everything like that. It's like a kid on Christmas morning. So now granted, he's going to play it cool with these official visits as he should. There's a lot of people that are reaching out to him, trying to get just five minutes, trying to get any kind of insight or Intel or whatever, or what have you. But I'm, I'm standing pretty firm with my feet in the sand here that, that Bryce West will end up in Ohio state's 2024 class. I mean, I know, talking to a few guys in the class they're hitting up Bryce West multiple times a day um honestly I'm surprised that he still has the same number quite honestly uh but that's a guy that uh Ohio State when they offered him they were in a moment of defensive turnover once again on the coaching staff and Ryan Day for the better part of that recruitment has been the lead recruiter and I think it's because I think it's just because um, Ryan Day knows how important that Glenville has been to Ohio State, and they saw prospects that were you know doing some things. Uh, I don't think Arvell Reese was at Glenville at the time because I know he transferred back to Glenville when he was a senior, going into his senior season. Um, but you could see that potential there. I mean, these coaches have a great eye for talent; they see that potential there. And so, getting getting in on Bryce West as early as Ohio State did, it's going to pay dividends. And, and you will see that happen. He has a great relationship uh, with Tim Walton. Uh, they are constantly uh, in communication um, and, and everything like that. And then the thing that hasn't been talked about in this, in this whole entire equation of both Aaron and Bryce is their relationship with Jim Knowles, who puts his corners on an island and says, okay, you guys take care of this. We're going to worry about everything that is in this, in this tackle box here. And I got five safeties that I got three safeties that are going to help me. And you two corners are just going to take care of everything that's right in front of you. That's what both of these guys want to do. Spencer at the next level. That's exactly what they want to do. I went to Springfield in March. I think it was. And I asked Aaron, I'm like, you know, what's, what's, one of your strengths as a football player and he goes getting hands on man playing in press coverage it's what ohio state likes to do in this 425 system with jim Knowles. so there are a lot of things that 
you know, I can talk that I could talk about this in circles. I could talk myself into that Aaron is going to go to Michigan and Bryce is going to go to Ohio State. I could talk myself into that they both are going to go to Ohio State. I can't talk myself into that they're both going to go to Michigan. I just can't do that. But one thing that I also think is important that hasn't been talked about, uh, at least lately, with, with all the Michigan momentum that's been brought up about Aaron. Aaron and Bryce have often especially on social media, have often talked about playing together. Now, I know the combo curse is like a real thing and stuff like that. Um, does that get broken? Potentially. If it does get broken, it's going to be to Ohio State, though. And that's, that's, my, that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Matt, cornerback isn't the only position that we have to talk about, of course, because obviously Bryce West and Aaron Scott, again, the headliners, the beginning and end, um, it starts and ends with those guys. But uh, if Ohio State is going to finish with a top three or four class, if Ohio State's going to uh, contend for the number one class in the country, I guess, uh, if you're going to take 25 to 27 guys, number one class should be the goal. Uh, then you're going to have to land another linebacker to go along with uh, Peyton Pierce, Garrett Stover. Uh, if Garrett Stover's making the trip unofficially, uh, good news for Ohio State. He's a great recruiter. Peyton Pierce is going to be on campus for his official visit coming up from Texas. I think that's probably good news. Uh, but they will be talking to uh, Kingston Viliyama Asu. Did I say that correctly? Uh, I have to like sound it out in my head before I say it. And I apologize to Kingston because those names are not easy. If whenever I find the correct pronunciation, I promise I will get it right. It's not, I'm not going to play some sort of game trying to renounce his name or anything like, yeah, if somebody knows too, hit me up with that pronunciation guide. It helps when uh, director of communications, Jerry Emig does the communication or the uh, pronunciation thing every year. If you got a name, you know, JT Tui Molo, I had to get used to that one. Uh, anyway, he will be on campus from Southern California. Uh, this is a huge visit, man. And it's going to fly under the radar because of the Bryce West, Aaron Scott storyline. But uh, Jim Knowles has done a great job with Kingston. Uh, more importantly, the addition of James Laurinaitis from Notre Dame, excuse me, back to his alma mater, has been huge in this recruitment. And I think that if if this visit goes well, I think it will be because of the combination of showing him the culture at Ohio State, because culture is important in that uh, area of the country and Kingston's family. It will be because of James Laurinaitis, and it will be because of the linebackers already committed showing him what life could be like. I think all of those things are important here. This is a big visit. Yeah, uh, this is definitely a visit that for some reason, I mean, not for some reason, but this is a visit that is under the radar. Um, but Ohio State has a very legitimate chance of going to Southern California and getting Kingston Villamuasa. It's kind of like just one word, you know. Okay. Okay. Uh, they can go to St. John Bosco and pull them out of there. Um, I've been, I've been close. I've been so close to like making a prediction on this, but predictions, uh, quite honestly, they, they don't matter here. And the, and this recruitment, um, Ohio state gets the last visit with Kingston, which last visits are important, especially when he has a top three, not a top five, not a top seven. He has a top three and it's USC, Notre Dame and Ohio state. He's already visited USC. He was there the first weekend of June. He was at Notre Dame last weekend, uh, and he's going to Ohio State this weekend. I was told by multiple sources, both from Notre Dame camps and from USC camps, that, uh, I mean, loved both visits. Uh, his family loved both visits. And that's what's going to be important for Ohio State. They don't have to impress Kingston. They have to impress his family. This visit is for his family to see that they can leave Kingston in Columbus, Ohio, that they can trust him and trust Ohio State to take care of their son. Um, that's a very big thing. You, you mentioned culture, the culture piece for Polynesian families. That is so big. That is so important, uh, which is why I I would I would expect uh, JT. You mentioned him. You mentioned JT Tui Maloao. Uh, he he will be on campus. Um, I, I kind of expect him to be on campus uh, to kind of help out with that recruitment. Um, I, I have a sneaking suspicion that hint, hint, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, that CJ Hicks will be on campus this weekend for that visit as well. 
Uh, so you have two two walks of two different walks of life right there. You have an in-state guy that is there. You have someone that is from the West Coast that is there. Um, I think it's also something worth noticing. T typically, uh, I'm not going to go down that rabbit hole right this second, actually. But one thing I, I do want to say is that with how important this visit is, it's going to be a full court press. I, I hate that term. We need to use football terms when talking about football things. You mentioned home run earlier, and that's baseball. And now we're talking about something else, and we use basketball. We need football things for these. That's going to be a weekend assignment. Ohio State it, needs to hit an eagle this weekend. <laughs> now we're talking about golf. Uh, anyway, they they really just – they really just got to scrape the the offensive tackle and just get a tackle for loss here, but tackle for gain, whatever you want to say. I don't know. What I'm trying to say is, is that it's going to be Jim Knowles and James Laurinaitis, potentially JT, potentially CJ Hicks. And then you know for sure that Peyton Pierce, who I talked with him, and there's going to be a story out on LettermanRoad.com about his official visit. This is only his second visit to Ohio State. So like, He's also going to be learning about Ohio State. Like, really and truly, if you kind of think about it, Kingston knows more about Ohio State than Peyton does. And Peyton's committed. So, like, that's kind of an interesting dynamic, don't you think? Yeah, a little bit. I mean, it, it's inter it's certainly interesting that Ohio State doesn't really need to recruit Peyton Pierce because he is committed. They already did that. But also, that like, they have to show him, like, the vision. Like, yeah, yeah, like, you have to be like, secure in what you're doing, like, Obviously, a kid from Texas has to know that he's going to succeed and thrive in Columbus. And also, Matt, while we're making these analogies, if Ohio State really wants to beat Notre Dame for Kingston, they should probably just have uh, Mike Hall and Xavier Johnson host him. You know what I'm saying? I hear you. Uh, they have Lorenzo Styles Jr. host him. I mean, he just left Notre Dame for Ohio State. Uh, actually, something that is interesting to me, and I just I literally just thought about this on the spot. Uh, isn't Ohio State's athletic director a Notre Dame alum? Yes, that That's is actual. That is something interesting. Yeah, check the notes at home, folks. I am pretty sure Gene Smith is a Notre Dame alum and has now been at Ohio State. Has he been there for a decade? Over a decade? I don't it's know. Time. It's been a long time. It's close. If it's not a decade, it's close. It's been a long um, time. He hired Urban Meyer. Yeah. Either way. So either way, uh, Gene Smith knows both places. Uh, not just the football programs, but like he knows both places. So I'd be curious to see if Ohio State brings him in for the for whatever reason. But as far as uh, you know, Kingston Kingston knows about the brotherhood that is Ohio State. They talk about that all the time, and like that's a true thing. You walk into the Woody Hayes Athletic Center, and like you feel that. Like even as reporters, we walk in there and we're like, oh, like there's. It's June. Yesterday was June 21st. And you saw how many guys were at that seven on seven yesterday. Like Marvin Harrison Jr. was there yesterday. And it's just because he wanted to be there. Like, that's a good thing. Uh, and Kingston fam Kingston's family is going to get it, get to see that, um, which I think is going to be paramount in, in, in this recruitment. Um, I'll be interested to see how at the end of the weekend, how this goes, um, you know, I'll, I'll send off a, a couple of texts uh, Sunday afternoon when I, when I know guys are leaving campus. I don't like to, I don't like to message guys on their visits. That's disrespectful, my opinion. So let them enjoy their time. They're there for a reason. Um, but I, I am, I am looking forward to uh, look forward to Theo making an appearance on the show. <laughs> Looking, looking forward to uh to what what Kingston's takes takeaways are, and then seeing what sources inside in, inside the Woody have to say. I think also, by the way, something I want to bring up that we haven't talked about because you, you've been gone and we haven't been able to do a show for a while. Ohio State hosted Edwin Spillman, uh, June 9th through the eleventh, four star linebacker from Nashville, Tennessee, out of Lipscomb Academy. Uh, Ohio State is they. They feel a lot. They feel like they're in a good spot for him, despite his official visit to Tennessee. Like there's some quiet confidence about about Edwin Spillman as well. So don't don't get lost on that. Ultimately, I think he will still end up at Tennessee, but I don't think that recruitment is just yet finished. And I wanted to bring that up. 
Ohio State's also hosting Demarion Witten this weekend. Um, not a huge visit, I, I would say, but also like an important visit. You you would want Demarion Witten in the class, I believe. Um, but we'll talk about him, I think, in the recap, uh, Matt, of the official visit weekend. We're going to do a lot more of these recruiting shows uh, moving forward. I would be terribly remiss if I didn't mention, though, I'm hearing good things from Ohio State on the defensive end front. I'm hearing good things coming out of Ohio State on the safety front. With that being said, Matt, K.J. Bolden is visiting Alabama this weekend on an, in an official capacity. Edric Houston, I believe, is visiting Alabama this weekend in an official capacity. I'm going to go out on a limb and say K.J. Bolden's visit to Alabama and Edric Houston's visit to Alabama are just as, if not more important to Ohio State than anything Ohio State's doing in Columbus. Uh, this weekend because if you can get Edric Houston and KJ Bolden out of the state of Georgia and they don't go to Alabama and they don't go to Georgia that is the biggest win you could possibly have in this cycle Uh, so I think that that this show cannot end without us at least mentioning how important it is to be monitoring Joseph Hastings and Bama and uh, you know Bama online this weekend the on three site they do a great job over there they really do that site is is very good and when you're talking about K.J. Bolden and Edward Houston, two high, high-priority Ohio State targets, visiting Alabama this weekend, keep it locked and loaded there because Joseph's going to have a lot of stuff from them. And if you don't hear uh, as positive of things about Alabama as you did last weekend about Ohio State coming out of those visits, I think that's nothing but good news for the Buckeyes. I think it's important that those are also two different recruitments. Yes. Right? Yes. Uh, I think it's important to note that. That it is two different recruitments, and we'll start with KJ Bolden first, um, just because I I'm gonna I'm gonna extend this conversation a little bit. I, I I know you were trying to wrap it up, but there are so many things that that we haven't been able to talk upon. I want to try and get as much in in as little time as possible. Uh, KJ Bolden's recruitment is really between Ohio State, Georgia, Alabama, Clemson. Those are the four, right? But then there's layers to that. Uh, Ohio State and Georgia, like. Those are the two. That is the heavyweight bout right now. Those are the two schools that he is like locked in on. Really just it it goes back and forth. Alabama has a chance this weekend to enter that conversation. And if Alabama does enter that conversation, historically speaking, I don't like where Ohio State sits then. Um, But if if the weekend is a so-so experience in Tuscaloosa, um, if, if there's no elephant stampede and it's still Ohio state and Georgia standing at the top, that's where it gets interesting. You know, I believe he still has a September official visit to Auburn scheduled, but quite frankly, yeah, and quite, frank, quite frankly, if he makes a commitment in July and still does that official visit, like no matter where he goes, Ohio state or Georgia, either of those programs, I don't think is going to be sweating about that. If that does happen, by the way. Yeah, I, I don't I don't know what to make of that scheduled visit to Auburn. I think that's like a – and I'd have to talk to probably Justin Hoke and some of the guys down there at the Auburn site. But, like, that might be like a break glass in case of emergency visit. Not that he – you know, if he doesn't see exactly what he wants to see from one of these June visits, okay, I've always got the Auburn visit that I can go take and then probably do some unofficial game day stuff elsewhere. Right. But, like – Man, it's a five-star kid that's got Alabama, Ohio State, and Georgia as, you know, right there. Like, you're probably going to see something you like out of one of those three and probably make a decision. And so – You would think. I'm not discounting what Hugh Freeze is doing right now because it's it's impressive, the things that they're doing really early for that Auburn class. But, like, I I think that this is a three-horse race. And in particular, I think it's a two-horse race with Alabama running a distant third. Alabama's going to this weekend, I would assume – push the fact that Caleb Downs may start at safety for them as a true freshman and say, Hey, KJ, like, why not do it too? Um, yeah. But, but I think this is a much different recruitment than Kate, than Caleb Downs as was last year. And I think that's important for Ohio state fans. They got their hopes up with Caleb Downs last year. I think there's reason like legitimate reason. And I was part of the problem. I, I had an RPM in for Caleb Downs till we committed to Alabama. Uh, but uh, I think there's a legitimate reason for Ohio State fans to be optimistic and not just hopeful in the KJ Bolden sweepstakes. That doesn't mean that I think he's going to be here. I think I, I'm not ready to put an RPM for him. When I am, I will. I'm not afraid to pull the, to pull the trigger on these RPMs. I, I don't know if you've noticed, um, yeah. but uh, 
when I feel good enough, I, I'll put one in either to Georgia or Ohio State. I don't feel that good right now, but I also think there's reason for Ohio State fans to not just be hopeful like they were with uh, Xavier Wampa and Caleb Downs in the last two cycles. I think there's reason to be optimistic this time. And then circling to Edric Houston, um, Ohio State is in the driver's seat for this. Like, I, I, I'm very comfortable saying that. I have actually put in a pick for Ohio State to land him. You'll uh, see one from me, too. I'm, I'll, I'm going to say that right now. I'm, I'll be putting one in as well. Uh, by the time this show goes live, it might be up. But uh, if it's not, stay tuned because I'll have one as well. I, I'm, I'm feeling good about that. The, uh, the old adage of Larry Johnson going to Larry Johnson, which has kind of lost some steam the last couple of cycles. Uh, this cycle, Larry Johnson going to Larry Johnson. Uh, and they've done a tremendous job with Edric Houston, that relationship with the coaching staff. And again, we bring up relationships so many times, but like that's how Ohio State recruits. They are a relationship driven program. They're going to win over families by having relationships. And with Edric Houston, I mean, Buford is such a, a weird program. It's the one program in the state of Georgia that like the Bulldogs just don't own, which is kind of funny because like that's one of the best programs in the state of Georgia. But uh, Ohio State has done such a good job with that recruitment. They hosted Edric last weekend with KJ Bolden. Um, and then additionally, I mean, he goes, there was some noise that like he was going to cancel his Alabama visit that he wasn't going to cancel. Ultimately he didn't. And like, that's what you want. You want these kids to go on these visits so that they have something to compare it to. And when you just look at, I mean, those are two heavyweight programs, Ohio state and Alabama, look at what they do with defensive linemen. Yeah. Like that's a hard decision to make. Clemson is also a school that's in the, in this race, but Ohio state's in the driver's seat. And I, I think, I think they will stay in the driver's seat. Yeah. Alabama might have their hand on the wheel, but Ohio state will have their feet on the gas. Um, might be one of those situations where someone like, you know, you got to blow your nose or something. Then you have your buddy sitting in the front seat, hold the wheel so you can blow your nose for a second. You know, I don't encourage that by the way. Don't do that. I've never done that. Just a hypothetical situation here. Anyway, I think Ohio State going – I know Ohio State going into this weekend is in, in the driver's seat for Edric Houston. If it can survive the weekend, staying in the driver's seat, that August 22nd commitment date, we could see that get bumped up a little bit earlier. One final defensive end prospect that we have gained some recent intel on uh, that we need to talk about because it's been very quiet. His recruitment has been very – quiet for being a five-star edge prospect is dylan stewart out of washington dc friendship collegiate academy we heard some things at ohio state that were interesting to say the least i would like to say um ohio state is, is a serious contender for the number one overall prospect in the country by on three uh originally ohio state was recruiting him as a hand in the dirt defensive end that has since changed uh, pretty recently it seems like it has changed um they are now recruiting him at, at the at the jack position and from what we were told yesterday uh that change has really skyrocketed ohio state's chances with dylan stewart so that's going to be one to watch well i mean i just think that like i'm going to give larry johnson some credit right now but like i could back off of it because Last year, I, this time, I was probably giving him some credit, too, for having Ohio State in their mix for some five-star defensive ends. But, like, I'm hearing good things about Ohio State, like very good things about Ohio State with Marquise Lightfoot. I'm hearing very good things about Ohio State with Dylan Stewart. I'm hearing really good things about Ohio State with Edric Houston. Then you go to the next, not tier, but, like, you hear some decent things surrounding Darian Mayo, but I'm not confident in that one. But still, I think Ohio State did a really good job with his visit. And so, you know, like, and then Justin Scott's visits on deck, which we didn't even really mention that much, but like that's a five-star player who Ohio State really likes. And and I think, you know, Parker Fleming, who's the lead recruiter in the Chicagoland area, deserves some credit for for keeping that communication open. And Larry Johnson's going to probably take the torch from Parker and, and run with it here. Uh, you know, I think Ohio State's done a good job with him. And so I don't want to say that Ohio State's going to be fine at defensive end because last year was obviously – not good. Um, you got some talented players. I'm not going to take anything away from that, but like 
He had three five-star defensive ends, and you you came away with none of them. I think that it's I, it's starting to look impossible that you don't end up with at least one, and I believe it will be at least two in That's this four. class. That was four. Oh, yeah, I guess I held, held up two twos. So yeah. at least two in this class. And so I think that right now the staff – deserve some credit for what they're doing. They deserve some credit, but I'm not giving out any flowers until at I'm least not putting the cherry on that Sunday yet. I'm no, just saying. No, 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 no. I, I, I'm putting, I'm scooping the ice cream, but like I'm not putting any whipped cream or sprinkles or whatever you put in your Sunday. I don't know. I don't eat ice cream Sundays, just ice cream. But I think, uh, Spence, I'm going through, just the entire month of June that it has been. Um, and who is one official visitor that is uncommitted that we haven't talked about that you feel like has serious Ohio State momentum? I'll go way off the radar here. Um, the term home run that I used earlier, I heard it more with Brandon Baker than any other player. Uh, I think Oregon, I think Oregon leads right now. Um, I think there's a lot of work to be done. Maybe not. I think there's still a lot of work to be done with Brandon Baker. He's one of that the only, he's one of the only like high high rated five star tackles in this entire class. Um, I think it's not a great year overall around the country for offensive tackles, but Brandon Baker is a really good one and. I, I think Ohio State did a really good job there. And I, I I'm not gonna obviously not gonna throw out an RPM yet. I'm not just gonna be throwing darts, but you know, I, I think that that there's a chance here that Ohio State can can go out of June when all of the visit momentum and that post visit glow from all of the schools he visited wears off. I think that dust will settle and, and the Buckeyes might find themselves in a good position there. So some recent things I have uh some things I know. And some things I have heard. I'll we'll start off with what I know. Brandon Baker took his official visit to Ohio State the weekend that all and the entirety of the offensive line class was there. He since then well, he originally was going to make a decision sometime in the season, uh, potentially December. He leaves Columbus and says that he wants to commit in the summer instead. That's a good thing. Uh, additionally, he was at Texas, uh, last weekend and there are reports saying that, oh, Texas knocked it out of the park, all that. I don't buy it. My sources and people that I talk to that I think are very trustworthy, um, have said that there was some questions on even why he took the visit in the first place. Um, so if that's, if that's, if those are questions, um, those are questions worth listening to. Um, this is definitely, I, I think he has Georgia this coming weekend, which that is big. That is something to watch. Um, yeah. But I think right now everything goes back to Ohio State with Brandon Baker. Um, it's, it is spending time with all of the guys in the 2024 class. I heard that uh, him and Ian Moore really, really clicked. Um, and their families really clicked as well. They found a lot of commonalities between the two families, which is exactly what Ohio State wants to hear. Uh, and then additionally, his player host was Luke Montgomery, who you put those guys and you look at their what they can do on a football field and then what their size and everything like that and their capabilities, they're, they're kind of the same player. Like they're very similar talent-wise height weight what they can do what their ceiling is like they're pretty similar luke wasn't a five star um but he was also in a very talented uh offensive line cycle uh and most places also had him scouted as an interior offensive lineman so that kind of also goes against the grain but they're pretty similar players um and so the fact that he was brandon baker's player host and so he can give the insight to ohio state i just Ohio State is just going to be that one school that won't go away for a lot of these targets. 
And that is, that's telling. And then you look at Justin Fry, what he's already done in his tenure at Ohio state. I mean, Paris Johnson went number six overall after one season at tackle. So that speaks volumes. There are a lot of things cooking Ohio state's way. There are a lot of things cooking in Ohio state's way. That's where we end the show. I'm going to do the Dave Chappelle hit the water and run away. Jeremiah Smith's visiting Miami this weekend. I don't think there's anything to read into that at all. Um, he's taking an official visit to Miami. They're going to buy him dinner and put him in a nice hotel and show him a water slide in the facility or something, but I don't think that matters. But anyway, um, if you've been watching this long, thank you, thank first you, of all. Yeah. Uh, second of all, I'm sorry. Uh, third of all, uh, I – Took 10 days off and there was a lot to talk about. So I'm not really that sorry. Um, we like to talk about recruiting. We like Ohio State uh, football recruiting as far as uh, covering it, the ins and outs. Matt Parker does a great job at Letterman Row, where you can get all of his coverage uh, for a pretty reasonable price right now. I think it's a great deal. You can also gift Letterman Row to people now. It's a cool new thing that they're doing uh, over at the brand. Make sure to follow that. Uh, Andy Backstrom, Tim May, and I have full coverage of the team all year round. We're in the middle of offensive line week. Matt Parker on the recruiting side doing a fantastic job covering these official visits, unofficial visits, visits elsewhere, and everything in the name of Ohio State recruiting. For now, we're going to get out of here, uh, write some content. See you guys at LettermanRoad.com. See you in the Letterman on the Letterman Lounge message board. This has been the Letterman Lounge recruiting show. Uh, that's Matt Parker on the other side of that screen. I am just Spencer Holbrook. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. We will see you guys back after a jam-packed official visit this weekend. Official visit weekend this weekend in Columbus.